different look and different sound, perhaps, because I'm using a different recording device from the normal one, owing to the fact that the usual recording device has just decided it's not going to delete files anymore. I'll have to work on that. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think of the quality of this device. Let's take a look, though, at this nail fungal cleaning laser relief device. And the listing for this, and there are lots of them, and they're, they're quite cheap and everywhere. Well, I say they're quite cheap. Some people are really gouging the price, as they do. But you can get them for cheap prices. And it says, Nail Fungus Laser Therapy Device Mini Painless anti on Comycosis, infection, grey nail, thick and yellow, in bed, brightening, repairing. Uh, there was another picture I could have chosen for this, which showed all the different diseases and things it could handle. But, uh, yeah, uh, I, d- it would, I couldn't pronounce half of them. Anyway, the 4.5 reviews, the five stars are mostly people saying, uh, I got this and it works great. Of course, I've still to try it, but it works great. The ones at the very bottom were complaining about the fact it turns off after 30 seconds, and yet it says in the box, use for 10 minutes. That doesn't work out too well. Let's open it. I tested it. It runs for 15 seconds. Well, this one does. What we have is a device with a USB cable, USB-C, and inside are three nail varnish curing lights. That's fundamentally what it is. Let's zoom down and take a look. It's the nail varnish curing type lights, and there's a button down here, and it suggests that this is actually just a rebadged uh, nail lacquer drying machine where you basically you put all your fancy ultraviolet cured lacquers on, you put it in, press down, and then you just hold it there for the 15 seconds, and it cures your resinous nails. Let's plug it in, and I'll show you it curing resinous nails. Uh, I did a research, very briefly, it wasn't very inspiring. Uh, Click a button. Oh, wow, feel the curing energy. Um, Very bright, it's the typical ones that are mixing UVA. Oh, hold on, let me go and grab the UVA test card. One moment, please. Okay, I've found the test card. Some of these actually drop things like UVC and things like that. Uh, It's not. So I'm going to turn it on. And if this is detecting UVA, it will darken the pigment on it. It's darkened the pigment, so it is UVA. If it stimulated the phosphor and UVC, there'd be UVC. There is no UVC or UVB. It's strictly UVA, which is unfortunate because in the research I looked at, it said that UVA, B and C were much more effective than A. And in that research, they basically taken the fungal stuff off patients' fingers and they'd put it in a lab conditions, which meant it was fully exposed. What they didn't mention is that if you had fungal nail and you put UVC across it, not only would it cause major skin irritation in the vicinity, but it would not really penetrate through the nail to the uh, the fungal growth. Now, these LEDs... The current of it is about 500 milliamps. That is quite a lot. Anyway, let's open it. There's nothing coming off the bottom. This assembly inside looks complete, so I'm going to guess that if I squeeze it like this, it will come apart, which it does. There's a rubber pad. Well, it is rubbery. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, that's held in by a screw. Let's not use violence in that. Let's bring in... Phil's brass screwdriver, which Phil very kindly turned for me on a lathe with knurling and everything. Okay, what have we got? Oh, surprise, surprise. Look, it's an 8-pin microcontroller. It's almost... Maybe I should just call this the 8-pin microcontroller channel because it's like, what's happening in most products these days? But anyway, I shall reverse engineer this and we shall explore it and take a look at the circuitry. One moment, please. Okay, reverse engineering is complete. No great surprises. Let's uh, take a look down at this and explore the circuitry. The USB connector here is a standard USB-C connector, but it doesn't have the programming resistors that are used to indicate to smart chargers that this is a load. So if you plug it into a smart charger, it might not work. If you use the supplied lead, which is dumb USB-A to USB-C, then it will work. We've got two connections here for the LED panel. We've got an A2SHB MOSFET for driving that, which is good. That's good for up to around about 2 amps, that tiny little transistor. It's ridiculous. Um, And this channel could literally be called the A2SHB channel as well as the 8-pin microcontroller channel because that's a super common transistor, Uh, amazing transistor. The 
5 volt supply comes in, positive goes to the LED array, it then goes to the microcontroller with a little decoupling capacitor around it, the uh, negative loops underneath and goes over to that pin there, the switch, the button here, has the end, this end connected to negative and this end connected via a resistor to the input. That's quite odd that they've used the resistor. And the output from this pin goes straight to the MOSFET gate with a 10k pull-down resistor to make sure it stays off solidly uh, when the microcontroller is in an unknown state. Uh, anything else to say about this? Yes, there is actually. I tested the standby current draw because I thought this would be quite a useful little module for, say, solar applications where you just push a button and it brings on light for up to 45 seconds. Um and uh, the standby current is 1 milliamp, which is quite high. 800 microamps, to be precise. That kind of suggests they've, they've taken a build building block approach here, and they've got this processor running at uh, probably 4 megahertz or something like that. Certainly the PIC microcontrollers, you can choose a lower frequency setting based on internal oscillators, and it cuts the current to a super low level. But I don't think they've done that here. Uh, the LED module is quite nice. It's got very hard to find LEDs. Having said that, I've never really looked specifically for these LEDs, but certainly not mounted on an aluminium substrate plate. Here it is here. Let me power it up. Bing. A uh, nice valety glow off that. It looks white to the naked eye because they've dusted the gel with phosphor in there to basically so that, well, people when they're looking at it can see that uh, it's on because their fingers are lighting up a bluish colour. Um, or, well, it's kind of, it shows up as purple in the camera, but it's white showing up as here. And that's just a visual gratification thing that the ladies sticking their fingers into those things can see it light up and therefore the gel is curing. Uh, there's a single 2.7 ohm resistor for all the resistors in parallel. It's dropping 1.4 volts across that. The current of the panel is about 500 milliamps. Exciting. Now, I'm looking at these things here. Just I'm just going to turn the voltage progressively down. Oh, that circuit board gets pretty hot. And what I'm seeing here is that the there's a little extra chip in there. Let me zoom down this. Let me bring it up and focus on this and show you this. There's a little black chip in there at the top that doesn't light. Maybe a protection chip for the, the ultraviolet LED is all I can really guess there. That seems quite common in the UVC LEDs. Okay, so let's go to the very, very, very vanilla. I shall focus down onto this again. Schematic. And the schematic shows both circuit boards. I shall zoom into this. And make sure it's in focus. Here's a USB supply in, 5 volt rail, 0 volt rail, decoupling capacitor. I'll just finish adding dots in a more obvious manner. Uh, the microcontroller, the button that pulls one of the inputs to 0 volt rail, but there's a high uh, resistance pull up in there, but they've got a 3.3k resistor. I'm not sure why they do that. It would protect against problems the software if it somehow set that as an output and someone pushed the button and it just dragged it straight to ground. Not sure why they've done that. There is a 10k pull down resistor. There's the A2SHB MOSFET and there's the LEDs with their common 2.7 ohm resistor. And it is worth mentioning that uh, they've allowed for another resistor in this. So they you could have used maybe two 4.7 ohm resistors in parallel or something like that just to bump the current up a little bit. Uh, I guess they just allowed this to be a universal circuit board. Maybe they run the LEDs at higher current and put it on a bigger heatsink. Who knows? But that is it. Does it cure toenail fungus, though? Well, I'm not convinced about that. But you know what? You can't rule anything out. Maybe it will be found to be the miracle cure for toenail fungus. But as it is, it's a nice little module. It's got its uses. Even if you just bought it and just whipped it straight out the unit, um and just used it for the little ultraviolet LED module, UVA, with white phosphor, and the little timer module. Now, other things worth mentioning here. The UVA nail lacquer, the UVA cured nail lacquer that the ladies are using, uh, it's causing problems, health problems, because uh, where they go off the nail and onto the skin, it's sensitising the skin in the same way that the ultraviolet cured 
3D printing resin does. So keep that in mind. If you're using a 3D printer that uses the resin, be very careful to glove up and make sure you don't get it on your skin because it can cause a situation where you just basically get sunburn at the slightest provocation. Also, there's something rather sinister about that as well. It's causing an allergy to, is it methyl acrylate? And that means that some of the ladies that have developed strong ad adverse reactions through putting too much in their skin and over going over the nails onto the skin, they're now actually developing an allergy to the resin tooth filling material, which is a bit weird. But anyway, that's it. It's a little fake-ish, unproven UV UVA, I was going to say UVC, it's most certainly not UVC, UVA curing thing, quite nicely built, cheap, good for the bits. That's the main thing. We can salvage the bits out of it.